hello guys welcome to the isaac show today um it's good to have you around today uh, this is another episode of the isaac show the weekly hangouts about african entrepreneurs african disruptors african creators you know and the stories behind the movements the brands that they are creating um so today we're going to have a special person on the show um her name is titi Lion medoye she is the founder and ceo of um, milky express yeah so titi will be joining us shortly um as soon as um she makes a request uh, we're gonna bring her up um so titi basically runs um, a company that um helps to boost the quality and quantity of milk supply for nursing mothers you know and she's been doing it for quite a while um so we will be listening to a very inspiring interesting and amazing story um while we wait for her to join i'll just quickly go through our profile so titi Lyo medonye is nigeria's um first international board certified lactation consultant um and um, economist with over eight years of management and leadership experience working in health hospitality and manufacturing industries okay so i think here with us now um um let's bring her in welcome guys welcome remy dairo welcome fiance um glad to have you guys around hi hi, uh, hi, hi. okay she's finally live hello Titi. Hi. Hey, hey, what's up? I'm good. How are you? I am very, very well. You look nice. Thank you look you. sharp. Yeah. Sharp. <laughs> Actually, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks. How are you? I'm very, very, very well. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay, so let's just let's get at it um as as fast as we can. So um you're Nigeria's first international board certified lactation consultant. Like whenever I hear that that um, phrase, I mean, I'm like, wow, interesting. Nigeria's first to do something. Yeah. You know, that's like that's like them, them saying that um, like, first man to fly to the moon. You know, <laughs> tell us about how that. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a huge that comparison. About? Yeah, I said that's a huge comparison. It is, it is. But I mean, for you to be the first Nigerian to do something, that's that's an amazing feat. Trust me, any day, you know, any day. So, how exactly did you come about that? How did that come about? How did you achieve that, basically? Um. So I think, well, um, pretty much that happened by virtue of my starting Milky Express. So after I started Milky Express, you know, I realized that. So you know, in starting Milky Express, the goal that I had for starting Milky Express was just to have, um, you know, the edible products that can help with milk production in terms of quality and quantity. But the yeah. more I went into Milky Express, I began to um, interact with mothers who had much more deeper breastfeeding challenges than milk supply, right? A lot of people experience a lot of things from pain, injury, latching challenges, um, baby refusing yeah. the breast and all of that. So I couldn't help them yeah. because all I was doing was making products. So I couldn't help them. So I, um, and because I I'd had my daughter in the US, which was where I heard about the product at first, I got the opportunity to meet a lactation consultant. So coming to Nigeria, I was looking for um, a lactation consultant, but I couldn't find any. You know, I searched and searched and searched, and there was no one that was offering that service. And I even checked on the lactation consultants um, board because they have a they have a directory where you can go and look for somebody in your in your locality or in your community that can yeah. Yeah. So I checked on that yeah. and I couldn't find anybody, you know. So I I, I, I thought to myself that okay, maybe this is something that I can do. Obviously it wasn't as simple as just taking the course because for me I had my first degree. I had my first degree in economics. So economics yeah. and lactation are two completely different um, models, you know. So I actually yeah. had to go back to school. I took some first year courses, some first really? year pre med courses. When you um, say go back to school, you mean you mean um, as an undergraduate? 
Yes, or or you just go for really? So wow, all, interesting. So because if I had if if I had um if I had a science background, I wouldn't have had to do that. But I did not have a science background, so I had to go back yeah. as an undergrad and do first year pre-med courses. Right? Yeah. For a year. I did a, did first year pre-med courses for a year. About eight courses. Yeah. Then before I now did the lactation consultant course, which was like another mm. year, so like two years now. Yeah. Then I now had to another thing that was very important was that before you can take the board exam, you have to do something that is called clinical. Right? It's like in the medical school, after medical school, you do clinical and all of that. So I yeah. also have to do clinicals under someone who is a lactation consultant. You can't do it by yourself. And, you know, somebody has to supervise you. So, and because there was nobody that was doing it in the career, I had to go to the U.S. And I was in the U.S. for months doing my clinical time working in a lactation so Okay, so, so why did you choose, why did you choose? Yeah, sorry. Why did you choose this route at that point? Like you, okay. So pretty much, you went to have your baby in the US. Um, you, um, you employed or you had to do with the services of a lactation consultant, right? Yeah. And then you go back into the country, into Nigeria, and then you found out that there were there were no people doing this thing in the country, right? So why did you then take the plunge so much so that um, what what, what gave you the assurance that okay, this is something you wanted to give? your best shots like you wanted to you wanted to build your life around mm -hmm. because from that time <laughs> onward you started researching you, you basically poured your life so what gave you the assurance that this was it for you basically i think that i wouldn't really say that i had 100 percent assurance to be honest um i i it was because i mean the experience for me was a really really hard and difficult experience you know i had postpartum depression coming back to nigeria trying to take care of a child and, and my baby was always sick so combining that for me so it was a very difficult experience so um the when i started making the product you know i i obviously didn't start out with the idea that i was going to do do something in breastfeeding line or you know make products for breastfeeding mothers that was not my intention anyway so, so um, I was to make the product i said i actually started to make the product for myself right? for yourself I started to make okay the for it, was, it was in search for your own personal solution exactly because that time. it was too expensive for it's me to, to buy it from the u.s i ship it to nigeria from the u.s so okay I the ingredient list and i said i was going to make my own right so interesting <laughs> so i made mine and i was using it and um I, my my sister in law had a baby, and she needed yeah. help. Like she wasn't she wasn't lactating, so I gave her some of yeah. the products. I had. You know, I some of the products yeah. I made for her. I gave her. She liked it, and you know, she kept asking yeah. for more. You know, and as she was asking for more, she had told some of her friends. You know, and they started calling me, asking for cookies and asking for tea, and mm -hmm. it became a, an expensive gift. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the number of people that wanted yeah. it kept increasing. So kept increasing. they happily offered to actually pay for it. They didn't. Um, they didn't. I, I mean, like, I didn't ask them to pay for it. I didn't ask them because I didn't think that it would be, um, mm -hmm. you know, a business that people can actually. Mm -hmm. have, you know, have Mm. So basically, so, you had you had a challenge. You were exactly. you. I mean, you went in quest to solve your own personal challenge, personal and then you found out that other people around you also had this problem, and then you wanted exactly. to solve it for people in mass. Exactly. And then, okay, and, and you know, um, there's actually a statistics that says that seventy percent of new mothers experience breastfeeding difficulties. Seventy percent. Wow. So, and I mean, it's a wonder why. Um, Nigerian healthcare team, we don't have breastfeeding professionals as part of the healthcare team. Um, mm. I'm not saying that, you know, they are nurses, they are midwives, they are doctors, but the line, the practice and the experience that a lactation consultant brings is total, totally, totally different from the experiences and the trainings that a doctor or a nurse or a midwife would have. Absolutely, absolutely. I I can I can I can I mean, attest to that because I vividly remember right now what my wife went through. 
when it, when it came to lactation, especially um, during our own period. Yeah, basically. So now let's let's rouse back a little. You know, um, from your profile, of course, it's obvious that um, you you were into paid employment before uh, founding Milky Express. So why and how did you leave? tell us about the process of leaving paid employment? to going into business fully like saying okay this is it now i'm, I'm gonna leave paid <laughs> so this is that question is a whole gist on its own and i really think that i think when, when i when i explain to you everything that has happened you will really understand yeah. exactly what i said key express literally happened to me right so i was working so i was working in this company um, I was working as an admin as an admin staff in this company, and um, I was there. When I had my daughter. I was there before I had my daughter. So I had my daughter, then I before went. You had your daughter. And, yeah. okay. So there was a period when um, I, it was it was during the holiday. It was like during Christmas. You know how companies close for the end of the year. And, yeah. Um, you know, the company closed, but because I was an admin, I had like a lot of work to do. So I didn't close myself and my team. We didn't close. We continued to work. Um, you know, throughout the holiday when every other person was in their house. You know, we were working. Yeah. Okay. January came. We just continued working, so we didn't get to take a break. You know. So at the end of mm -hmm. January, we had an appraisal. And of course, you would think that after putting in that much effort, you know, um, and you after friends. working there for yeah. two years without any kind of promotion, and you put in that much effort, yeah. you expect that the is going to be a good one, right? And yeah. the was a good one, and I was expecting nothing less than a promotion. So sometime like in the first week of February, they announced that there was a promotion, and they had given me a promotion. Right, so wow. honestly, I really Amazing. felt like I deserved it. Thinking about the last um, month, and it came like, through. I was excited. I was, you know, the yeah. time my team was excited. I even shared the testimony with my family, with my friends, with my church. And yeah, great. I mean, great stuff, fantastic stuff. Amazing, and, amazing. Um, <laughs> and like a week after that. The yeah. HR calls me and says, Oh, that she just had a meeting with me, like herself and the MD need to have a meeting with me. Was that, right? was that another promotion? Yeah, it continue, was another promotion. Continue. So I said, Okay, sure. I mean, you know, so I went, like, no big deal. And you know, during that meeting, they told me that they had actually made a mistake and they promoted me in error. Wow. Yes. Oh, my. Are you kidding <laughs> me right now? I'm not kidding you right now. <laughs> so, um, the yeah. HR told you it was a, yes, it was yes. a mistake. Yes. It was wow. A mistake. Yes. Oh and dear. So they wanted to okay. Secretly call back the promotion. The promotion. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, just that. But yeah, the one that's a trust me. So, at that so point, what did you do? What happened I, afterwards? So at that you point, I was like, no, you know, that I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to have that because, I mean, apart from the fact wow. that I generally work hard, hard, hard. Like I know myself, I don't play. Yeah. Right? When I work, wow. I work hard. Like I don't play. Do you get? So for someone to, to say that to me was dealing with my psychology and like you know kind of telling me that I wasn't good enough and I was not going to have it do you get so I told them that Trust in that case they can keep the promotion and keep the job and so um I was I was going to I resigned on the, on the spot like there and then you know and they tried wow. to try to um they tried to like sort of like ruffle me up and tell me that oh I have to give them one month's notice if not, they're gonna they're not going to pay me for um the two weeks I'd worked in and in February and I was like yeah. look at me guys do you really think that I'll I'll stay stay because of that two weeks pay mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so I told them that you can keep the two weeks pay like I'm still gone. You know, so I that imagine. was that experience for me. So I left, right? And I left, yeah. and that wasn't all. To be honest, that wasn't all. I now actually went and joined another company. And so uh, okay. when I joined that company, everything was going on well. Everything was great. Everything was fine. You know, everything was going on perfectly. Unknowing to us, there was a lot of not good, not so good stuff going on behind the scene. 
And one day we came to work and there was no more work. In the in your new company or in the former company? In the new company. Okay, in the new company. All right. New company. So and at this point, by the time I was in the company, I started Milky Express, but it wasn't like full time. And at that time, I was still just trying to. And you had your you had your first daughter then. Yes, and yes, exactly. Your I had my first daughter yeah. from the first company. So for the um, first company. Yeah. yeah so um, I just by the time I was in the second company, I just started Milky Express, but it wasn't it wasn't like a serious gig. It was, it was just like, like a side gig. Just, it was like a side gig, you know. So okay. apparently, in that in that other company, I think they were actually doing really, really bad financially. And I guess we didn't have as much information about how bad it was. But there was a day that we came to work, and there was no more literally like they had closed the office, and <laughs> and that was it. Like the MD was nowhere to be found. <laughs> And yeah, so that was it. Like, yeah, was, that was it. And as a matter of fact, to date, I never like wrote an official resignation or anything. You know? <laughs> Interesting. So, um, so yeah, it was like, um, I, I, I truly believe that because throughout that whole difficult time and difficult experience that I had with breastfeeding, you know, I always, because I generally always pray about a lot of things. I I pray about the serious things, you know. So when I had those breastfeeding difficulties, I prayed a lot about it. Like, why do I have to go through this? Like, it's, everybody just makes it seem like it's just breastfeeding. It's a big deal. I should be able to, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Um, when, um, when I started making the products and giving people, I started getting that nudging to actually make it a business. But it just didn't make any sense to me at that time because um, mm. I guess my mind was not open. My mind was not as exposed to the things that you know could happen in that regard or the things that could happen in that regard. All the possibilities and the potentials and all the business. Exactly, the possibilities and the potentials, you know, because I obviously I didn't do enough research, number one, and I was listening to the wrong people. The wrong people that are telling me wow. that oh, um, you know, it's not going to succeed. Like Nigerians are not ready for this market. This business is going to fail. This business is not going to succeed. You know. That's that's I, actually I, that's actually supposed to be my next question. That will then give you the confidence that yeah, people so, are going to pay for this so, um, product. Um, I, you know, is is I of, yeah. So I got a lot of people saying it wasn't going to work. I even had somebody offer to buy the Milky Express name because they felt like, oh wow, wow. that name is very nice. We've actually done a CAC of that name. That's very nice. I like to buy that name. I'm like, are you kidding me? So you think that my name is nice, but the idea is bad. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so um. So um yeah um I think that what really gave me a lot of a lot I don't think that one thing gave me the confidence I think that quite a lot of things combined together to give me the confidence to continue to push in Milky Express um one was the fact that I I had because of my personal experience I had that um passion to really really want to help to be honest I just really really okay. wanted to help. I did not, if I wanted to have a business that would cash out, I would have done something in IT, to be honest. My husband is in IT. It would have been very easy for me to do something in IT and be cashing out, right? And do some big have like a Zoom platform or something. So I was just genuinely, because of my personal experience, I was just genuinely passionate about the experiences of mothers. About the okay. okay. So was, now, um, the first company promoted you and reversed the promotion. And then the second company closed up without um, <laughs> prior information. <laughs> so you packed your bags and baggages from both companies and then mm -hmm. you went on back to your side gig. So yes. how did you then move from that point onward? What did you do step by step? Carry us along with the story. Okay. Um, so what so, happened um, afterwards um, for me? Okay, so move back to my side gig and then my side gig now became at this point i think i had opened i think i'd already opened my full -time accounts. Job. i'd already, yeah. I'd already uh, left my full-time job and everything and i opened my instagram account and um i started selling online to be honest like and because of the kind of product that it was because it was an edible product people always made return there was like return sales so you know you have a customer you know that you have that customer for the next one year you know and the customer keeps yeah. coming back yeah you know? yeah people so come it back was yeah. Easy, yeah it was easy to it was easy to and and to be honest i mean at that time i was the only person providing this service so 
because they used the products, the product worked for them and they loved it, I was guaranteed that they would come back. And I was not yeah. just guaranteed that they would come back, I was guaranteed that they would also tell somebody about it. And that was it. You know? yeah. so they, started, they started telling more people and you know there was more work for me, there was more work. At this time, um, I wasn't looking for a job, so I was just giving up on, on paid employment. You know, I just gave up like, okay, you know what? Let me just face <laughs> let me just look for something else and probably face a business. But I still wasn't really thinking that it would be no key express as such. I just still felt like no key express was a passion project and maybe I can go into buying and selling or something else. And even at that time, I, I was actually a professional makeup artist. Um, after I finished school, when I finished um, uni during my NYC time, I went to uh, makeup training school. So I was working as a makeup artist. You know? So I kind of feel like the business idea that I really had was, okay, I'll just do makeup artistry and not necessarily um, wrestling as it were. But, you know, obviously, as time went on, it started growing much more bigger than I could handle, you know. And I now started to have more confidence in the fact that, you know, this can actually be a, a big a game changer, not just for me, but if I yeah. took it more seriously, be able to help so much more mothers. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, Milky Express started, you know, and, and all of that. So, now, you, you mentioned something very important, which is the fact that um, you, you were the first person in Nigeria to start, um, um, I mean, breasts, I mean, lactation, I mean, business, right? So, I mean, where, what, what was your, like, your model? Did you, I mean, did you have any model starting house? How did you navigate, okay, um, how did you navigate knowing what to do part-time, you know? And then I how was that journey for you up until I now? I didn't have any model. You? I didn't have any model. I didn't have any plan. I didn't have any business plan. Okay? I didn't have any business plan. I didn't have any model. I didn't have anything. I just wanted to sell. <laughs> do you understand? I just wanted to yeah. sell. I didn't plan anything. It did, it did, I mean, it's not like I didn't have that. I mean, apart from studying economics, uh, which is not 100% business business based, you know, I didn't have yeah. any other... Um, any other business experience or any other entrepreneurial experience, you know. So I just knew that I was selling the products and I needed to keep making good products and keep treating my customers right so that they can come well. back to me, that they're happy to come back to me. So to be honest, that was just my own model at that time. Be good to your customers, make good products. And the more I Hello. Did, the more, um, you know, I started getting exposed to a lot of, um, you know, other businesses and business conferences and seminars, you know, that would happen um, in Lagos or online. And, you know, I, I asked a lot okay. of my friends questions. I had a lot of friends then. Um, I have a lot of friends that are in business as well. So I would reach out to them, ask questions about things that I could do. And, um, you know, gradually things just... Um, I just started having a more concrete plan in terms of um, um, business, in terms of having like a business plan, you know. So at first, I just went with the flow. I didn't really have a plan. And then as time went on, I now began to um, come up with a proper plan. Interesting, interesting. So, so, so far now, I mean, you, I mean um, from the little I know about your business, you, 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 I mean, you, you are... You are currently you are currently around the range of uh, millions in turnover, right? And not turnover. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. how did you get to that point? Like, what did you do to get here? Basically, you know, what were the okay. things that worked for you? That worked for you. Okay. Um. Uh, on cards, I mean, so challenging. I had to. How I think that first of all, getting that certification, um, getting that cert that knowledge, not just certification, but actual knowledge, went a long way for me. Because I have customers now who come to me for consultations and not just for products. So having sure. that professional knowledge went a lot, has, you know, has helped us a lot. Um, partnerships too. I cannot, we cannot be where we are without partnerships. Okay, so we've leveraged on a part of our business model is um, to use partnership to grow and to scale. We're not really interested in having yeah. a store. That's not on our business model. But to partner with other people um you know to be able to reach more mothers so we partner with people that run baby stores 
we partner with people that sell baby products that like and and you know pharmacies and if we even partner with hospitals so we have to so and we have hospitals that also call me in for breastfeeding classes and for consultations so by virtue of having those consultations and breastfeeding classes in the hospital you know we already have we've been able to make contact with customers we've been able to to get their details and you know the moment we leave that place we establish proper communication outside of the hospital so the moment you know their baby comes they reach out to us asap for the products yeah and um, i think that we've also we've also we also had to take a lot of bold steps in terms of partnering with stores um because you know as as a as a startup product or as a startup business you don't find people who are readily who readily want to pay before taking a product off you when they're not sure what the yeah. sales or return will be or you know um you know how yeah. quickly they would get return on that investment so we had to give a yeah. lot of people products up front for free and you know we had to bear the grunt in the back in terms of managing our working capital and work managing our cash flow cycles and all of that and yeah. um, you know as as time the more you know the more these people had worked with us over the years and they've now began to see consistency in their customers coming back to ask for the product you know they now became more confident to put down some sort of investment you know thereby reducing our own risk you know and then taking the products interesting amazing i mean i find the story very amazing because um um it's it's one of those ideas that that can only be can only be inspired sincerely especially at the time when you started you know um mm -hmm. being one of the first movers you know in the continent and all of that okay so tell us about um um the product you've sold um i mean what products do you currently have um how far have your product gone because i saw your profile that you've sent i mean you you um, you have customers across Nigeria, in different countries, even across continents. Tell us about that. How, how did um, that so come to be? Have, you have uh, customers? Uh, how, how did you attract them, basically? You know? Okay. Um, so our um, customers are, our products, rather, aside from our products, our products are in two kinds. We have edible products and the non-edible products. And um, obviously, we're improving every day and we're increasing our product line every day and our product offerings every day. Um, yeah. But, you know, for our, our edible products, we have it's tea, we have head. cookies. Your, your audio has gone very low. It has. Can you hear me better? Yeah. Okay. 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 I think it's fixed now. All right. Yeah. Great. Continue. Okay. Great. So, awesome. um, okay. So for our edible products, we have lactation tea, we have lactation cookies, we have lactation yeah. shakes, we have lactation granola, yeah. which is like um, a cereal, and we have now, lactation milk. They like do the same thing, right? They do the same work. Exactly. The lactation they cookies, they lactation. The same work, you know, but you find that people prefer music. different things. People different, prefer different foods. And so because people dif prefer different foods, what we have done is to see how we can infuse our own lactation pro um, um, recipe into everyday foods such that people are more, um, you know, excited and happy to have it, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. And um, in terms of meeting our customers, I think that because we've been able to, um, you know, make good partnerships, not just in Nigeria. So we have partnerships with people in um, Ghana, South Africa, um, in the US. Um, we're trying to close one now in the UK. And, you know, because we have, so for, for, the, for the one in Ghana, because I went to school in Ghana, so um, I have a friend who runs a baby store. And um, I met her, she actually met her on Instagram. She just reached out to me on Instagram. And because I went to school in Ghana, we sort of had some sort of relationship and some sort of understanding. So it was very easy for me to yeah. just pick up my bags and say, okay, I'm going to Ghana. I'm going to meet somebody, you know, establish this relationship and we'll see how it goes from yeah. there. You know, so I went to Ghana, you know, I met her and, you know, we, we, we kicked off a very good relationship and it's been going on now for over a year, almost two years now. And, um, you know, she's become like our sole distributor in Ghana. You know, she has other retailers that take wow. products off her you know and um wow yeah and for south africa it happened the south africa experience the person i have in south africa happened when we when i went for the obama foundation um leadership program yeah last year 
I met someone there who had actually used our product. So she had actually ordered our product from Nigeria and we had actually shipped it to her by DHL. So she saw me and she was so excited. You know, she talked about how she had wow. used our product and, you know, her experience with breastfeeding and everything. And it was amazing, you know. So she talked about how she would like to, you know, retail the product. And of course, I was happy to, I was happy to give it a shot. And because I also had, had met her, about yeah. that no, that's fine that's fine you're back on now yeah Ooh. you can continue okay. so because of my relationship with yeah. her then it was just easier to be able to say okay let's give this relationship a shot let's see how it goes and um for the customer for the person in the u.s <laughs> that also happened because I, so after becoming a lactation consultant, I started going for, I started attending, I, yeah, every year um, I attend conferences in the U.S. for lactation consultants, both conferences and workshops where I'm able to, you know, um, get more knowledge, you know, because I really don't have as much um colleagues here in nigeria for me to rub minds with yeah and you know, share ideas and things and so i i oh I, I try not to miss that conference it's once a year i just go once a year i try not to miss it so i can learn new stuff so when i attended the conference you know i met someone there who had obviously been following milky express and also wanted to be a part of um a part of what was happening so yeah so i mean that's that's just how it has been Okay, now let's talk about competition. Like um, about what? Um, <laughs> competition. 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 Okay. Yeah, let's talk about competition. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. You can hear me great. So, of course, you were one of the first movers. Uh, I would say across Africa, because I like to think continental. You know, but right now, of course, um, mm -hmm. you have you have competition, whether you like it or not. You know, mm -hmm. uh, is it that you inspire them to start? you know, or something led to something and they also started. Yeah, so how are you dealing with that? Um, so I think, well, my personal model for dealing with competitors is, or competition is not to focus on competition. Because, um, I mean, I've come to realize that when you focus your efforts on what your competition is doing, um, how your competition is living, you tend to only do things that they are doing in a bit to try to catch up, right? Yeah. You cannot, yeah. you cannot be ahead of a competition if you're looking at the competition. That's the truth of the matter. Because yeah. you're only going to be doing things that, oh, they've done this, I need to quickly do it and catch up. You see what I mean? Yeah. So you can't be doing things like that. That so that's personally I don't do that. I don't look at the competition not because I'm trying to pretend like they're not awesome. there. I know that they are there, but in my mind I feel awesome. like I always have to be in order for me to be, um, in order for me to always be ahead. I need to tap into my own creative genius, right, and make moves based on my own strategic thinking and what I feel that the market wants and the market is ready for, and not what. And whether you like it or not, if you are looking at the competition, when they maybe they put out a new product, you will feel that pressure to be like, oh, I need to do something too. So I, I try not to, in any case, you know, look at what you know what the competition is doing. I just know. I have a, a, a strategy. I know what I want to do. I know what products I want to put out. I know when I want to put out those products and I work at it, no matter what the competition awesome. is doing, to be honest. Yeah. And I don't want to, I don't awesome. want to just give myself so, that heartache and that stress. <laughs> okay. Okay. Amazing. Okay. So but what, what would you say, what would you, what would you say are the like top one or two reasons why an average customer would choose you over the competition right now? Okay, um, so... What's that one or two things that, that just basically set you apart, you know, that would make... I think, I mean, I think that, go... that first and foremost is because of my professional qualifications. That first and foremost is because of my professional qualifications. Yeah. Because, you know, they come and they don't just come to say, oh, I want products. You know, they come and they say what their problem is and they want solutions, you know. So because of my professional experience, that's one and also because of the taste of our products. Now, um, not to brag or anything, but our products actually taste really, really good. And 
I, I can say this for sure because I love to bake. I love to cook. That's something that is just a passion for me. Okay. So our recipes are not recipes that, you know, was handed to us or given to us. They're recipes that yeah. I myself formulated by trying over and over and over again. You know, I'll make it, I'll taste it. I don't like it. I'll change mm. something. I'll make it, I'll taste it. I don't. And personally, I'm a foodie. So because I'm a foodie, I like cooking. I like food. <laughs> you know, I like pastries and stuff. I have a sense of what I know that something good should taste like. Yeah. I have a sense of what I know that something good should taste like. And so because I have that, I always strive for it in my product. I, I will not make a product that I cannot eat or that I do not like. Mm. I won't do it. As a matter of fact, till date, we have people who are no longer breastfeeding, who still buy our cereal, who still buy our granola, who still buy our cookies. Plenty of them. When I'm going to visit my friend there, you didn't bring cookies for me. I'm like, your child is almost five. What do you want cookies for? I still want cookies. Do you understand? So I will not make any product that I always use myself as a um, bouncing board, first of all, because I know that, that I can be finicky about a lot of things. <laughs> Somebody says, I agree, I have tasted your product. Thank you so much. I can be finicky about a lot of things. I always use myself, first of all, as a, as a sounding board. If I don't like my product, I won't sell it to anybody else. That's number one. Number two yeah. is that um, if I don't, I always try to make sure that every customer who comes to us gets a good, um, you know, customer experience. It's so yeah. important because I myself, I always feel like if I'm going to come to you to give you my money for a service, I want top-notch service. So if personally yeah. I want top-notch service, mm -hmm. I want to be able to give anybody who comes to me top-notch service. So I always, first mm -hmm. of all, use myself as a sounding board for things that I know that I like. Things and, but for things that I know that I'm, I'm clueless about. So for example, for IT, I was completely clueless about IT. So I don't use myself as a sounding board for anything that has to do with IT. I go to who I know, people who I know that are experts on it and run, you know, rub minds with them. Interesting. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's, that's very, very awesome. That's pretty awesome. Okay, now let's talk about money, basically. Um, of course, I mean, you can't run a business without money, you know? True. Um, so for you, um, as your money, as the money journey been for Milky Express? Like, um, so when you were starting out, um, how did you raise capital? You know, what formed the basis for your capital when you were starting out? And um, between when you started out and now, what has been the difference in terms of your revenue and um, what are your numbers currently? For starting out, I mean, how did you source capital and what are you doing now? I'm not, I'm not saying my numbers currently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the are so significant. Ah, I mean, okay, I'm not saying my, my numbers. Tell us, tell us what you can. I'm not saying my numbers on Instagram live currently. If you want to know my numbers, you, I can send you a document that shows my numbers, but not on Instagram live. <laughs> no problem. But no problem. Um, I think that, so our money journey has, um, you know, like I said, I didn't start out Milky Express with any grandiose plan. So I pretty much yeah. started Milky Express with my savings, with what I had. And, um, and yeah. remember, I, I had said that um, people were willing to pay for the products. So in, in their mind, they were not buying a product. They were paying for me to help them make something. So what that yeah, meant was right. they were giving me money beforehand as a form of capital to make, True give that. them, and then have some change. You know, so that. doing that, saving, and then in, uh, putting in my own personal funds, you know, got us to a certain level. Yeah. And then we got to a certain level and we realized that, oh, okay, we're going to need more funding because we want to now begin to do bigger things. And my husband was now also very supportive in that area. Um, and um, I also won a grant. The first grant I won was one millionaire from the AGS tribe. And um, that also did made huge impact, you know. And um, since then, you know, we've been had our ways of raising funds. Anytime we want to do something, one wants to take a bigger step or one wants to scale, we know what our funding needs are. You know, we're raising funds either, but we've been, I mean, so far it's been angel investors, you know, angel investors in form of like debt equity or loan. 
um but so far not any external um you know um financing platform so far okay um so the journey pretty much has been a fantastic one uh, from from the stories you've shared so far but i'm also very certain that um there might or there could have been times when uh, you faced very huge challenges right so so far since starting milk express what would you say like just casting your mind back what would you say has been your greatest challenge so far running this business <sighs> greatest or you've not faced any at all like you've not faced, I mean, what it's, it's just been rosy <laughs> I guess I, like I, I face challenges you. every day. Every day, there's something will come up. Something will shall come up every day. It's like, um, but I, I, um, I can't really say which one of them is my greatest, to be honest, because we've had times when a lot of things will go wrong. Um, okay, well, maybe I can say that my greatest challenge so far was actually when I was in an accident. So in 2018, I was actually in a fire accident, in a gas explosion accident in my office. Wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was actually badly burnt. Like my face, my neck, my arms I was actually really? badly burnt. And yeah. <laughs> so what so I think that that, um, okay. So tell what me about happened it. was, yeah, I, oh, I'll tell you. What happened was, um, so this happened before it was on the 2nd of October in 2018. Um, you know, there was a public holiday on the 1st of October, so there was no work. And the 1st of October that year was on a Monday. So we had orders that had come in from the week before and that we would usually prepare on Monday and send out. So because of the public holiday, yeah. we were falling behind. And so because we were falling behind, we had to, you know, try to do everything as quickly as possible and catch up. So that day, I just figured, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, I can make this thing, you know, I bake myself all the time. I can do all these things. So let me go into the production yeah. room and help out just to make things quicker. Yeah. So the baker at that time was, you know, baking and we had the products in the oven and we ran out of gas. Right. We ran out of gas and um, she didn't turn off the oven itself. Right, she didn't turn off the oven itself. She just went outside straight and turned off the cylinder and disconnected the cylinder. So when she oh disconnected the cylinder, I told her, you know what, take it, take it outside straight up, so that we we'll call the you know gas people to come and do an exchange for us. Yeah. And while she was taking it outside, I now connected the new cylinder, not knowing that the oven itself wasn't turned off. So I connected the new cylinder and I went back inside, as you know, trying to be in a hurry. And, you know, I struck a match and there it was. Oh, yeah. So that was a very, very wow. scary experience. Um, wow. I actually really thought I was going to die because I, wow. I passed out from the pain. My face, like my entire face was burned, my brows, my eyes. I was actually seeing a plastic surgeon after the accident. I was seeing a plastic surgeon. I was seeing um, an eye doctor because my eyelids were burnt and they were yeah. infected. So my eyes were like swollen and I couldn't really oh open my. it and see. And um, yeah, so I was rushed to a nearby, it was my neighbor actually who was even home, who rushed me to a nearby hospital. And, you know, um, they just did some quick first aid there. And then I was now transferred to my own hospital that's in Sierra Leone. So that was where I was seeing you know, a plastic surgeon quite regularly. So um, I think that that would, that would, that would, that I would say has been, you know, my biggest so far, the very, very, because I mean, it now really showed me that, yeah. okay, apart from business being that. a risk, you know, apart mm -hmm. from business being a risk is this business because it has to do with, you know, gas and fire. It's also a dangerous mm -hmm. one. So, um, so there has been some price to, pain along the way. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know. So, wow. I had to, you know, make a decision that, you know, am I going to really continue with this? Because I then, I then, after that happened, I developed a phobia for going into the baking room, into the production room. It was, it was always very scary for me. I wouldn't even want to go near the place, even if the oven was not on. I wouldn't even want to go near. I had a huge phobia for going near my oven, and, um, but I realized that if I was going to continue to do this, I was going to have to deal with that. 
I was just going to have to deal with it. So I actually set up like a timetable when I will go to the baking room, turn on the oven, right? I'll go with, I'll tell my husband to go with me. We'll go together. Because at that time, my, 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 I was working from home. So it was my BQ. My husband will go with me. I'll, he'll wait for me. I'll turn on the oven, you know, safely and quietly and gently turn it on and then walk away. You know, I'll come back and turn it off. And I continued to do it for like weeks before I could now say I was, you know, very okay and very ready to come back. You know, so do you have so, a better yeah. you have a better process to it now. Yes, yeah, so now so now we have a better process okay. to it. Okay. We've now been able to put in a lot more um, you know, um uh precautions against fire accidents yeah, and also yeah. you know okay. um let's talk about let's talk about um um the real because of course what most of us see is the beautiful you know produced products make express you know different brands mm. different packaging you know uh very creative packaging packaging but what's what's i mean tell us briefly of course i know you can't you may not be able to delve deep down into it but tell us what's what's the process of your production, you know, uh, for products basically, or for your for an average product, what's the process of production? How do you source material? You know, what's the process basically in a nutshell? Um, so the process of production obviously starts from you know supply chain in terms of supplying raw materials. Um, we yeah. always have to make sure that um, first of all, in, in fact, I mean, I've had crazy experiences with suppliers. To be honest, I've had crazy experiences with suppliers. Um, I've had to deal with suppliers that will supply inferior products, right? Mm. And at that time, you know, we didn't have that understanding of them signing an N um, a non-disclosure agreement or signing some sort of document that says that, you know what, when you supply this, we're not going to pay you immediately. We're going to see how the product works before we make payments. Yeah. You know, we didn't have all of that in place. I didn't have the knowledge to all of that. So... I'll just pretty much tell them, bring, they'll bring and I'll pay and that'll be it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've had people supply bad products, things that are literally spoiled. I bought things that are literally spoiled and they'll say they're not going to take it back. That's not, that's not how we gave you and blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. I've had to deal with that. Um, I've had to deal with people that, people that you pay, you prepare for product, for raw materials and they, it will not show up until today. I don't okay. know where my materials are. You know, I've had to deal with shady people like that. Um, Welcome to Nigeria. <laughs> yes. So um, my entire production process, I, I would say, starts from that point, sourcing raw materials. You have to be yeah. able to have reliable um, suppliers. And I mean, that will not happen in one day, to be honest. That would happen over years. So I've had, I, time, I, yeah. I have people that, I have people that have supplied me certain materials for a long time now that, they don't, I don't even have to call them to say, I want this. My staff can call and say, bring this. And they'll bring it in whatever quantity and not expect to pick up a check. Absolutely. You know, yeah. so yeah. the more you do this, you know, the better you, you build better relationships. Better. You're able to, you know, get some sort of credit line from your suppliers. Because if you're in a kind of business where you're using distributors, you have to be able to have a good credit line from your suppliers. That credit line has to balance with the credit line that, you're distrib that you are giving your distributors, okay? If not, you're going to go broke. Um, so, yeah, happy to, you know, develop that relationship, manage that relationship, sustain that relationship is one thing. Um, then coming into, um, you know, the actual production of the thing. So I think that in terms of the actual production, it has been, that has, has also been a tough cookie because, you are working with people that are just like the labor market is, I don't even know. Somebody recently said, somebody recently said, and this is actually very sad to say, but somebody uh, recently said that SMEs always get the leftover from the labor market. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I think it's true, actually, because you know, it's so funny. Like, that uh, SMEs someone was saying get, that most companies in Nigeria now. Right? I mean, yeah. facts, like, from an authoritative source, that they actually recruit from, they recruit Nigerians from outside the country. You know? Very so true. they get That's the best brains. True. So SMEs, they get the rest. Yeah, so, yeah. So, they said that SMEs always get, they didn't say they get the rest. They said SMEs get the leftovers. You know, the one that nobody wants. 
the people that could not get the bank job, the people that could not get the, you know, fantastic jobs, those are the people that we are left with. And to be honest, I've, I've dealt with my own share of, um, of terrible workers, terrible staff, uh, people that you give instructions and they feel that, you know, because I am an experienced baker, that is not how it is done. Failing to understand that there is a process for you to be able to get, um, if you're, for example, if I try to make, excuse me, I try to make jello fries and you tell the person in this rice, put only two cups of water and put only one teaspoon of salt. But the person now comes to come and tell you that, no, when I make it, this is how I like to make it. I like to put two and a half spoon of salt and not one. It's definitely going to change the taste of the product. It's going to change the recipe. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when it changes the Absolutely. recipe, it'll change the taste. And what happens then yeah. is there's there's inconsistency in the quality of your product. Yeah, and the result so also do, changes. Of course, so the result will also change. And your customers will tell you that this thing does not taste the way it was when I bought it before. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so you give instructions like that. You provide... So, I mean, first of all, I had, you know, I had a recipe, you know, we'll share, give the recipe to the baker, teach the person and everything. That was going on until the person began to feel like, I, I'm a professional chef. I know better, you know? And then we moved on to the stage of having an SOP where your SOP tells you exactly what you should do when you should do it, right? Yeah. And then you yeah. either come today and you find that they have ripped the SOP, like the, because it has to be a physical document that they, I want you to go through every day while you're going yeah. through the process. Don't do it from your mind. Because you have a lot of things. Yeah. I'm going to assume that you have a lot of things you're dealing with and a lot of things you're thinking about. So don't produce your products from your mind. Use the SOP. Okay? And the next thing you know, you go one day and the SOP is in ruins. And what happened? Why is it like this? Oh, um, one excuse or the other. So what have you been using? Ah, we know it now. What do you mean you know it? <laughs> you know? So having to deal with that, having quality check. Anybody who is in, you know, a product-based business will know that quality checks is so important. So, so yeah, important, you know. Yeah, so, um, yeah. yeah, so having to deal with that um, is a challenge. Right. Having to do, ensuring that, you know, quality checks is a challenge. And then, fi um, and then, you know, the final process of then getting the product to the customer also has its challenges. You know, so customers reach out to us from our website, our Instagram page, you know, WhatsApp calls, referrals. And um, we have to, for this, end, for this end side of the production cycle, we have to partner with distribution companies, right? We have to partner with logistic companies. So we have logistic companies who would come, pick up the product, take it to the customer. But a lot of things happen in between, right? A lot of times when you're not using and in-house, so it's not your own distribution company, it's not your own logistics company, it's not your own rider, right? You're using somebody else. So these people have their own plans, they have their own arrangements, they have their own agreements, you know? So when you would, and for, for us, a lot of times, our, our customers are mothers who are either at home or if they are at work, they're still on the nursing mom shadow. What that means is that they don't stay in the office till 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. They close like 3 yeah. or 2. So when they make an order, when the rider is going to them, the rider has to get to them before 3 o'clock. But these guys just feel that, oh, I'm going to make a delivery in a bank. Bank, they close by 5. Yeah, the person will be there. That Nigerian you know, so factors. The, exactly. So the, yeah, so the person is wondering, that I'm about to leave. Where is the product? And you would have told the delivery man that this person is going to close by three o'clock. But they'll tell her, uh, after somebody that is working in bank close by three o'clock, is the person the MD? Even the MD will not, so they will do what they want. And you know, yeah. sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you, we just have to look at it from their perspective because from their perspective, you are giving them a product on the island, and you are telling them. They're picking up a product in Lekki, and I'm telling you, go and deliver this product in Oshodi. But they have other products to deliver in VI and in Ikoi. So it only makes sense for them to go to VI and Ikoi first before they go to Oshodi, right? So okay. we have to just always try to see how we can find 
that rhythm and okay. find that balance, find you know. And so because of that, we've now awesome. decided to work with more than one logistics company. So we don't work with just one, we work with more than one. So that pe- packages who are going to a certain area will go with one person. Packages that are going to a certain area will go to another person so that we don't have this kind of challenges and because of my calling, I've not gotten my order and all of that. Amazing. Well done. Well done. Well done. Okay, so um, I think our time is fast spent. So I'll just ask um, the final question and then we will take it from there. So um, I saw when you reposted about the show on your page that you said uh, Milky Express has changed your life. You know, so we've talked about the challenges, we've talked about the milestones, amazing things you've done. In fact, um, you also recently won fifty thousand euros. Man, free money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, like so how has how has Milky Express changed your life in your own words? Okay. In closing. Um, so Milky Express has changed my life in so many ways. Number one, I find that it makes me it has opened up my my my, my eyes to see the the real state of the healthcare system in Nigeria, okay, and mm. to really see who are the people that are suffering, you know, from the indiscipline of our leaders in terms of providing proper healthcare. Um, that is yeah. one thing, and because my mind, my eyes are now more open to it, I am now more drawn to try to bring solutions. Okay, so that Amazing. this is where we we Amazing. set up the foundation to be able to support infant and maternal care, Amazing. you know, in Nigeria. So that's one thing. Another thing is that my work ethics has completely changed. So I always thought I was a hard worker until I began to run Milk Express. <laughs> it's on a different level, you know, running a company, being a staff somewhere where you are HR and HR alone. I mean, it's hard, but being running a company where you are HR, finance, admin, procurement, yeah, everything. Yeah. If you have yeah. to up your productivity game. Yeah, the idea so it has person. helped me to be more productive in terms of my time, in terms of focusing on what I need to focus on. I don't have time. I no longer have time to just faff around. I no longer have time to just sit down and be just in yeah. unproductive. I think days. It's I, <laughs> yes, you know, so that is also something that has, you know, really, really changed my life on. Yeah. And honestly, awesome. you know, awesome. Um, Awesome. Meeting amazing people awesome. like okay. you, new friendships and all. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> awesome. So what would be your final words to an average Nigerian female entrepreneur in closing? In just in thirty my, seconds. Yeah, okay. I, I really literally have sixty seconds. I would say that my final word is be committed and be consistent. Be committed and be awesome. consistent. Because it will be hard and when the hard time yeah. comes consistency and commitment is what will take you past that stage and whether we like it or not every business will pass a stage because in every business you, you, your plan is to grow your plan is to scale and as you get to that point they w- you will face a new challenge to climb a new mountain so be consistent and be committed wow thank you so much for coming on the show it has been a very insightful <laughs> interesting and amazing evening Thank you very much and congrats. Thank you so much for having Express. me. Thank you, you Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Isaac. Thanks. Righty. See you. Bye. Bye.